Having been made gratefully redundant, my mind moved to catching up with unfulfilled plans, a Morocco trip by motorcycle being near the top of that list. My trusty F650 had conveyed me to work for a number of years. Now at last, it would have its legs stretched properly. A set of cheap Alpos panniers shoehorned onto the standard Z mounts and a pair of Sava Invader tyres completed bike prep. Jerez World Superbikes was conveniently en route. At Algeciras, this group of classic cars were rally bound. From Tangier Med, an ultra-modern port facility, I headed south to Chef Chouan. I couldn't find my B&B, so instead headed up the very steep hill to the very basic campsite. Although the camp calf had a menu, the young lad on duty could only do an omelette, so I had an omelette. Heading south next day, I came across Volubilis, an astonishing ruined Roman town in remarkably well-preserved condition. A new roof on this one and you could move right back in. The numerous mosaics depicting scenes of African animals and fabulous sea creatures displayed phenomenal craftsmanship. It's hard to believe the superb condition of these tiled wonders considering that they are just left open to the elements. The imposing entrance gates were particularly impressive with the wide paved high street set between them. According to my self-appointed guide, this is a spa pool. The curved indents are where exhausted Romans would sit and relax. Volubilis is a must-see if you're passing through northern Morocco. Where the land begins to rise into the middle atlas, you encounter the beautiful cedar forests. The Cedrus atlanticus is an impressive tree, but a forest full of them is awesome. You'll most likely meet the cute monkeys up here, but if you're unfortunate, you might encounter the less than friendly wild dogs. Meeting the locals in the throes of their daily routine gives a true impression of how things are there. With my limited French, I bought bread from this man and jam to go with from this typical lock-up shop. The kids will come out to hassle you, but they're always full of fun and are never a problem. Street food Moroccan style. Moving further southeast away from the mountains, the topography becomes more desert like. While riding through the splendid Zid's Gorge, it felt like I'd arrived in the Morocco of my imagination. Truly spectacular. Descending into the Zid's Gorge was my first taste of an oasis-style palmery. There I stumbled across this perfect little campsite, complete with cafe doing an excellent omelette. It was tasty, with flatbread and then pomegranate and an apple for dessert. Back on the road the next day, this chap ran over to me to deliver a handful of dates. Such friendly folk. In parts, the typical street scene transports you back to another time. The ultimate aim of this journey was to reach the edge of the Sahara. Arriving at Mazuga for the first time is a memory that lasts, with the high dunes glowing deep orange in the fading sunlight. Although there are low-rise hostelries alongside the dunes, the Erg Gebi remains an awe-inspiring sight for the European traveller. Yes, I did hire a camel, but disregarding the awful cliché, the silence and sense of peace once amongst the dunes 
is mesmerizing. With a hearty breakfast on board, I saddled up to leave Haven the Chance, but not before a local man managed to sell me a trilobite fossil. Heading north, en route, this fascinating museum revealed itself. It transpires that trilobite fossils are a Moroccan specialty. The display of entombed creatures inside the building is quite incredible. Back on the move, the strong wind was whipping up the sand and small ghiblies spun across the open terrain. At Tingir, following the route into the Todra Gorge, these two lads intercepted me at the side of the road. An exchange of sweets for these delightful woven animals was done and they left me to proceed into the massive gap in the mountains. It's quite an awe-inspiring place. Here, the local Berber girls were having their bit of fun interacting with the odd-looking tourists. A short ride west brought me to another fantastic natural wonder, the Dadies Gorge. The unusual rock formations of the valley sides makes it possibly more beautiful than the Todra. Further along the gorge road I found this excellent little campsite. Next day I followed the route of the Casbars to Wazawate, famed for its gigantic film studios. Following a rough track north I found eight Ben Hadu, recognisable as the backdrop to a number of blockbuster epic films. Continuing north, the road joins the Tizen Chichka Pass, a dramatic road, but it was fairly busy. Having cleared the mountains, it was a long run into Marrakesh, mostly in the dark. At night, Moroccan roads are not for the faint-hearted. From Marrakesh, I used the excellent motorway, which is akin to driving through France, all the way back to Tangier. Then a two-day ride across Spain and home on the boat to the UK.